Hello, and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. Today's video is the complete guide to the coinage of George V. His reign lasted between 1910 and 1936, so lots of coins in between to learn about today. We're going to be going in denomination order, starting from the earliest version of that coin. The smallest denomination in George V times was the farthing, worth one quarter of a penny. And here we see it on screen now. It was designed by Leonard Charles Wyon, and you'll recognise the design because it's also on the half penny and penny we'll see later. Obviously the word farthing appears on this coin, and it's different obviously for the different denominations. The coin is 20mm wide and made out of a copper alloy, with the majority being copper. On the obverse of the coin we see the portrait of George V. This is the one and only portrait used on circulating coins in Britain during his reign. It was designed by Bertram McKennell, whose initials you can see under the king's neck. The king is featured facing left, without a crown, as usual. Now, we move on to the halfpenny. Once again we see here this design of Britannia, designed by Leonard Charles Wyon, the only change being half penny on the coin. And now, one penny on the coin. These old penny coins are a classic and favourite among collectors, and of course are the third and final coin in the copper series to feature this portrait, as all coppers did back then. And now we move on to silvers. The Maundy coins featured the usual design for the one, two, three and four pence. That is a good segue onto the three pence piece though, a coin that saw a lot of change during this time. In the early days it featured this, the usual design, that was used on Maundy coins. In 1920 the first change happened, as it was made now 50% silver as opposed to sterling. This happened to all silver coins in 1920. The design change came in 1927, and here we see one in 1930, after the design has changed now to three acorns, three oak leaves, the words three pence, and 1930 at the bottom. Now onto the sixpence. Here is the first design, featuring a crowned lion on top of a crown, the St Edward's crown, which the date is split either side. This was also changed in 1927 to this design, now featuring six acorns and six oak leaves and the words six pence, and of course the date, 1930, at the bottom. And now on to the shilling. This looks and is the same design as the sixpence, obviously with the word one shilling being instead of six pence. This also changed in 1927, but to this design, featuring a crowned lion on the crown, St Edward's crown, with the date and denomination underneath and the legend around the top. Now we move on to the florin. Once again, here is the first design we see, with the royal scepters in between the royal shields that are crowned with a garter star in the middle and the date at the bottom. This was also changed in 1927 to this design. Looking very similar, notice the shields aren't crowned anymore, but the royal scepters are. There's a big G in the middle and the legend is a bit more detailed. Moving up a denomination once again, we now see the half crown. And here we see a crowned royal shield with the garter around and the legend right around the outside with the date at the bottom. Once again, 1927 saw a design change and here it is. The shield has now been squashed in in a sort of concave shield with the royal cipher crowned each side and the legend around. Now we move on to crowns. First up is the wreath crown and we see an example here on screen. These were only minted during Christmas time as a collector's item and so are very rare and never entered circulation. Now. We here at Bits and Bobs have already made a video all about the wreath crown. Why are they so rare and valuable? So if you'd like to learn more about the wreath crowns, watch that video after this one to learn more. As I say, these ones didn't circulate, so the only circulating coin was not the wreath crown, but another design that circulated. And that design was of course the 1935 Silver Jubilee crown, as we see here. We also know this coin as the rocking horse crown, as it does look a bit like the rider is on a rocking horse although the design was personally approved by George V for his jubilee that year. It's a sort of art deco revival design, as the dragon looks very stylized rather than how we'd imagine dragons to look if they were actually real, like on the Sovereign, for instance, depicts it. Speaking of Sovereigns, now we move on to the gold coins, and here we see once again George and the Dragon. This classic design by George and the Dragon was done by Benedetto Pastrucci, as much of you know, and this design was used on all the half-sovereigns of George V's reign and also on the sovereigns of George V's reign. Here we see a later example, and the design has not changed on the half sovereigns or sovereigns. This classic George and the Dragon design was on all the coins of George V. The double sovereign also featured the same design, although the double sovereign in these years was only released in proof, and so is rarer, obviously, as it didn't circulate. And the last gold coin is, of course, the five sovereign, a very, very rare piece from the reign of George V. George V five sovereigns were only released in proof as the double sovereigns were, and of course, that means they're very rare. Now then, please comment down below how you collect your George V coins. Do you do date runs of the different denominations getting one from each year, as I do? Do you go for typesets, as we've shown in this video, one of each design? Or are you more of a casual collector, just getting the coins you want? Either way, we thank you for watching, and we hope you'd subscribe to the channel, as we truly appreciate it. We'll see you next time on Bits and Bobs for some more coin videos. Bye!